Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. The African Development Bank this week provided insight into the outlook for the continent and released its inclusive index for Africa. Terence Kramer joins me to discuss some of the main themes. Terence, welcome to Second Take. What are some of the important messages emerging about the prospects for the continent? I think the main message is that the growth trend in Africa continues and looks fairly resilient. So we've had quite a few years now where Africa has been growing at above its historical levels. And last year, the continent grew by 6.6% uh, GDP growth. But that was a bit of a false figure um, because we had a massive recovery out of Libya, which resumed oil exports last year. And that really boosted the figure. So without uh, the Libyan figure, which was that they grew by about 95% last year, um, the, the figure would have been closer to 4.2%. So you need to take that context into account when you look into the 2013 figure, which is around 4.3%, and then you know the plus 5% that's going to come for 2014 in terms of the Africa economic outlook of the African Development Bank. So we're seeing that growth is being sustained across Africa. There are pockets of high growth areas um, in various parts of the continent, particularly in West Africa and in parts of East Africa. And then there are these pockets of low and uh, sometimes negative or flat growth. Obviously, South Africa is a problem in terms of its growth rates at the moment. And then you've got what's happening in Egypt, which is having an Im impact around North Africa's uh, uh, outlook, because um, without um, political stability in, in that important African economy, the growth prospects are going to be a somewhat subdued. But on the whole, the message remains that Africa, um, despite what's happening in the rest of the world, and despite quite a few concerns, especially emerging out of China's uh, future growth trajectory, we are seeing that uh, Africa's growth story continues. What about South Africa, the continent's largest economy? Yeah, South Africa is a weak spot in terms of growth at the moment. We all know it. Um, we had a fairly weak year in uh, 2012, and the outlook for 2013, again, is, is fairly weak. People are, I think the analysts are expecting around 2% growth, which is well below what we're seeing in the rest of Africa. In fact, stripping South Africa out of sub-Saharan African growth last year, we would have been closer to 6% growth uh, in this region and it ended up being closer to 5%. So you can see, and also the trajectory going forward is that South Africa is going to weigh down growth in the rest of the sub-Saharan African economy. So th we have a growth problem in South Africa. We see it in, in so many figures, um, both economic as well as socio-economic. And we've seen our unemployment ri uh, rate is starting to rise again. There's, there's a lot of weakness around this uh, economy. And I think we saw this week that government and business met again to try and look at ways to stimulate growth in what is still Africa's largest economy, but which is really not punching its weight. The African Development Bank also released its inclusive index. Um, can you please explain what it is and tease out some of the key highlights? Yes, I think, you know, as I said in the beginning, the growth story remains for Africa, but <coughs> the growth story for Africa remains also very uneven. And uh, we don't really have an inclusive growth path. So it's been very commodity driven. And it's also been very narrowly based. So when you have an African audience talking about growth, uh, the ordinary uh, African looks at these figures and says, you know, it's meaningless. You know, we aren't feeling the impacts of this growth. When you go into a lot of these uh, cities, there's a lot of um, uh, excitement around some of the building and construction that's going on, but still the, the, the life of the average person in, in Africa, whether you're in east, west, south or north, there's still a lot of uh, misery and a lot of problems. And it comes down to whether this, whether this growth is really inclusive or not. Uh, and in fact, it's very much uh, at the moment, that is the big challenge about Africa's growth um, outlook, is that yes, we, it's going to continue growing, Yes, that's important because growth is an important f part of any development uh, process. But then more needs to be done around inclusive growth. And the African Development Bank has done some work to actually look at um, an inclusive growth index. And the, the outcomes there are quite interesting in the sense that they try and 
uh, take the GDP per capita figures that are released for different economies and they try to strip it out or you know, uh, take out the issues of inequality to, to look at what does it really look like uh, for South Africa uh, or for a country like Gabon or a country like Botswana. So when you strip out those figures and they look at it, um, and these are, it's a mathematical, very theoretical <laughs> exercise, but they look at, you know, is there economic inclusion, is there social inclusion, is there geographic inclusion, and is there political inclusion? And they use those uh, uh, number of mathematical formulas to look at those uh, f uh, figures and look at inequality. And you'll take a country like South Africa, which between 2006 and, and 2010 was, say, ranked fourth in Africa in terms of uh, GDP per capita. But when you uh, rank it for this adjustment of equality, uh, we fall all the way down to number 41 in Africa. So out of the 47 countries um, surveyed. So you can see this inequality, the high Gini coefficients in South Africa have an impact when you adjust for, for that. And this is just an attempt by the bank to try and start measuring, you know, not just that there is growth, but what is the impact of that growth in terms of society and development. And countries like South Africa do very, very poorly because of the high unemployment levels and because of the um, high levels of inequality. Whereas a country like Gabon, which is ranked, say, top in terms of GDP per capita, comes in, the, the, the gap is not as big because it, it drops down to fourth place when adjusted on that basis. And then you've got interesting, especially in the context of what's happening in Egypt at the moment, you, you'd think that uh, the society is unhappy with, uh, with the way uh, growth and equality and the way um, the economy is going. Well, that, uh, that is being one of the issues that brought people out into the streets initially. You'll find that actually when adjusted, the GDP is adjusted for this um, inequality, they're number one. And whereas on a GDP per capita basis, they're number eight. So uh, there are economies that are getting it uh, a little bit more right than others in terms of that. But it's something, it's really quite theoretical and something that the um, African Development Bank's going out on a bit of a limb to try and analyze the, the continent in a different way and the continent's growth in a different way. And I think it really just sends warning signs to economies that think they're doing well in terms of growth. But actually, when you look at whether that growth is filtering down to greater inclusiveness all round, whether it's uh, economic or social, then problems start or red lights start uh, flashing. And I think that's possibly the value, especially for a country like South Africa, where we see ourselves as the most developed economy in this part of the world, to realize that you know when we look at our inequality and look at our social indicators, they're real problems and we need to take a much more holistic view and we can't just be fixated on what the growth rate is. Terence, thank you very much. That is the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.